Are you ready to go? Yeah. The Anna nods, then leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived, as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into the many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeeper busy prepping for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Diana's brow crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil of the Anna's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns to focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Thank you. I feel like I heard that voice actor somewhere. I don't know who he is, but I feel like I heard the male voice actor somewhere. I don't know where though. I need to check the credits to see if that's a familiar name. Even though I don't really know names. I know the voices. I know the voices well. I just suck at remembering names. I apologize. She motions for me to follow her. Once we're back on the familiar door path, I take one last look at the Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with birdsong and the uh, scuttling woodland... <laughs> Scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sound of nature still star startled me, and I glance at every rustle of leaves. The Anna, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listen to anything out of peace, out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits? A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger! Her previous caution abandoned, Lana sprints towards the sound and a follow at her heels. They both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing the fallen comrade, the bandits all unleash the weapons. Three of them hold so uh, long swords and two of them point guns. Trench coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes and can't see his face. He won't get away from us this time. Take him out. Man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. Diana sets her jaw. Stay here. As soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her and her white coattails billowing the graceful arc. She moves faster than only than on any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Gauntlet hands clen Oh my god, the sound effects are really high depth, I'm not even kidding yet. It sounds like something really exciting is happening. Her gauntlet hand her gauntlet hand clenches and a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the near nearest bandit. He flies away from her, crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. Not even kidding, those are like some high def sound effects. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too. Those <laughs> Whoa, what were those? Were those blasters? Is this sci-fi now? <laughs> Mysterious man fires a hail of pur uh, purple blasts of the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Anna deflects a sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. Ignore the honest command. I unsheathe my sword and charge to the battle. A relaxed version. Minigame will be available in future builds. Oh, this is a... This is gonna be a minigame. Oh, okay. That's cool. Alright. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it, devs. Win your fight or lose your fight. Ah. Uh, let's win this one. Diana breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who is standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down on myself and wince at my bruises. But nothing major. Diana nods and she fidgets with the manipulator. Who is this here? Hi. Is this the guy that was shooting lasers before? Man stays sound as he inspects his gun. Yep, that's our blaster boy. Now that I have a better look at him, I realize that although his fierce scalp makes him seem tough, he doesn't look like much older than me. 
His hair has a habit of falling around his eyes, but as he pushes it back, notice a long scar cut across the one eye. Once satisfied, he tucks his guns back in the belt and gets to his feet. He nods at us. Thanks. Then it turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. Good point. He studies us in stony silence. Then his gaze flicks to her manipulator. He relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. Liana nods. You're from the Mage Guild? Yes. I'm Liana. I'm Tham. Zack. Boy boy. All of us glance at the little blue pongo, who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And, uh, that's a little friend. I see. Boy! The pongo blinks at Zack, who stares him down. Pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy? Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the pongo scoots behind my leg for the safety. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we all set, we head back onto the road. Leanna and I lead the way. Pongo keeps pace with us, while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. All right, we got. Looks like we got a new party member with us, and I'm looking forward to that minigame, devs. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm gonna be checking the updates as soon as I can. I'm going to find them right now on Steam. By the way, link to the game if you want to check it out is always, always, every single time gonna be in the description below. I'm looking forward to the minigame. game. Once it implements again, we'll definitely have to revisit it. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe it's part of the routes. That'd be neat. Um. Let's ask her about her speed. Lana, I saw you doing the fight. How are you able to move so fast? Oh, I cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. Oh, so like putting on a speed buff. They're small adjustments, like shifting the draft to move me forward, or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Damn, that sounds awesome. She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. That would be amazing. I already imagine myself running like the wind. Lana seems pleased by my reaction. Alright, ask about Zack's weapons. Uh, yeah, let's ask about his weapons. I am kind of curious about it. So, what type of gun is Zack carrying? You mean his discharger? What's a discharger? Your sound behind us. Zack raises one eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? Liana looks a little uncomfortable. He's not exactly from around here. I mean, we could have hit our head uh, on the desk while we were studying, who knows. Zack crosses his arms. I see. There's a pause. So, a discharger. It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So, it, it is a gun. Maybe? The spheres are the bullets. Well, it's kind of the magazine in some sense because it's used to fire bullets. Or, in this case, bolts of energy. Dana looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. Never mind, I got it. Thanks. Sure. She smiles. Feels Zack's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. Let's ask how Zack knew she was in a mage guild. Probably, it probably has something to do with the gauntlet. I'm pretty sure. Uh, how did Zack know you in the mage guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts up her arm and points to a sigil at the manipulator. What exactly does a mage guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Sort of like a police force? Leanna furrows a brow. Police? Um, like how detectives go out into the field to solve mysteries. Um, a little like that. That makes sense out how, uh, why both the guard in Meadowhill Village and Zack re uh, relax after seeing the emblem. Well, it looks like the guard was telling the truth. There's definitely our bandits on the road. Yeah. Something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just... well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. She stares hard at Zack, but he doesn't react. What does it mean? Are they not bandits? Diana continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. They were bandits. She looks sharply at Zack, obviously caught off guard. Sure. They didn't sound too convincing. Subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy, especially since the music stopped. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they? And why were they attacking Zack? Well, they did say something about a bounty, I think. 
so maybe there were headhunters? The questions circle my mind as the conversations lost to silence. Leanne leads the way, though she seems to have something on her mind. Zach trails from behind. He remains on heightened alert. We traveled together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I feel my legs starting to burn from all the walking. Leanna squints at the sky. We should make camp before it gets dark. Zack nods. There's a good spot up ahead which hides us from view. It'll still give us visibility on any intruders, though. Sounds good. Zack leads the way, and soon we reach the clearing. Three of us get to work setting up camp. I roll out a bedroll to uh, near the campfire. Notice how thinly it spreads on the ground. Does this thing really be comfortable? I guess there's only one way to find out. I lie down in the bedroll and place my hands behind my head. Honestly, if you're exhausted, and I've been through campages before, if you're extremely exhausted and you've been just walking all day, even the hardest and roughest of surfaces can feel really comfortable. It's weird. Your body just adjusts to it. It isn't as bad as I thought. Ayana escapes my lips. I could definitely fall asleep here. Ooh, that actually looks really pretty. I like that. That looks really freaking cool. The things on the ground, like, I guess, the the bugs? Yeah, I guess the bugs. And then the sky. The sky especially looks really, really gorgeous. Holy hell. My gaze lingers on the night sky above. The moon hangs in an inky sky, dotting with so many uh, pinpricks of silver light. I sparkle vividly as, trying to chase, as if trying to chase away the dark. I breathe out of breath and wonder. I never knew that stars could shine so brightly. I try to pick up a few constellations, but the star patterns above unfamiliar. What are you looking at? I quickly set up with the sound of Liana's voice. She holds two steaming bowls in her hand. I set up one of the bowls with a smile. She sits beside me. Just admiring the sky. The place is really beautiful. Back where I live, you don't get to see so many stars. How come? Light pollution. Our cities are filled with so much light that it draws out the stars. I actually... I can't believe I have to... I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm sorry, this is annoying. But the one time I went on a camping trip, there was, um... I was, if you didn't know, I was actually part of Boy Scouts at a certain point. Uh, back in, uh, early high school days. And we went on a particular trip way out into the woods in a particular camp. I'm not sure if any of y'all heard Camp Ravenob. Maybe you might, if you live in the States or North Carolina area, maybe you heard of it. Anyway, at Camp Ravenob, we went out onto a, uh, a field. Completely open field with not a lot of light pollution anywhere, with lawn chairs and just like things you can lay back on, just put up in a large circle and just watch the stars for like hours, literally hours. It was gorgeous. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Leanna gazes throughout uh, the sky. Right. It's a little harder to see the stars in town than it is out here. I shake my head. That's not the same. Some nights I don't see the some nights I don't see the stars at all. Her eyes widen in surprise. She placed her chin in her hands. A night sky without stars. She looks at me. What's your world like? Um, uh, has a really cool tech. Humans are plaguing plagues to the planet. I wouldn't say that. That's mm, that's not something I would definitely never say. Um, I guess we can brag about the tech. Different, but more or less the same. We do have shops. We do have inns. We have dinners. We have a stew. Uh, we have weapons. We do have people, I guess, being bandits, technically, I guess, so to speak. Not not in this kind of sense, but I guess we can brag about the tech. It's really different. We don't have any magic, but we have a lot of technology instead. What sort of technology? Things like cars. What's a car? It's a means of transportation. With a car, we could have made the journey from Meadow Hill Plains to Meadow Hill Village within half an hour instead of half a day. Diana looks intrigued. You have an animal that can travel that fast? No, it runs off of gas or electricity, depending on what type of car you have. So it's like our carriages, which are powered by crystals. The more energy it uses, the faster it goes. Something like that. We have airplanes too, which fly in the skies, so we can have faster travel to other areas of the world. Humans who can fly? Diana's eyes grow in wonder as she grins. What else do you have? Uh... The interwebs. <laughs> oh, I like. I love this game. I already love this game. The choices are amazing. 
Uh, I'm gonna talk about mobile phones. That should be something easier to explain than interwebs. Uh, cell phones. Actually, I fish in my pocket and pull out my phone. This is my cell. She leans in close to inspect it. What does it do? I can make calls with it and send messages and talk to people far away. It also tells me the time and I can take pictures or play games too if I want. She takes a phone in her hand and flips it back and forth. Is it like scrying? How does it do that? Well, I'd love to. I'd have to turn it on first, but it doesn't work here. I think the battery is dead. Oh. She doesn't bother hiding her disappointment. She tilts her head back and returns her gaze to the sky. Underneath the moonlight, her pale skin seems to glow amidst the darkness. Her face softens as she smiles. You're right. The stars really are beautiful. Fall into the comfortable silence as we enjoy the tranquility of the night. After we finish eating and cleaning up, Zack approaches us. It's getting late. Leanna nods. I'll take first watch so you can rest. Alright, I'll take second watch. I guess that just leaves me with third. Zack stares unblinkly at me, while Yana coughs nervously. That's okay. We had an early start and I'm sure you're tired. We should rest up and sleep through the night. She's right, I'll do that. Do you guys not trust me? Um... Well, we're, pro we're probably not prepared for this kind of world, so... Uh, should we question it? Or should we just agree with it? I mean, technically I know what they're gonna say. It's like, well, I mean, you're a newcomer and it doesn't seem like you're really that prepped for the world, so maybe it's best you don't push yourself a little bit. I mean, we gotta know our limits, you know? We gotta know our own limits. I think I'll just agree with her for now. Why not? Alright, thanks. She smiles warmly. Good night, then. Good night. Zack nods. Diana crawls into her bedroll. As she lies down, Zack positions himself against a tree and takes a seat. Go to bed, get to know Zack. We probably could try to get to know him a little bit. Yeah, let's get to know him, why not? We're going to be traveling together. I should make an effort to get to know what kind of person he is. I walk over to Zack. Hey. Hmm? Mind if I sit? Dish was for me to join him, so I do. Obviously, I have to lead the conversation. So... How's the weather? Zack stares at me. Alright, let's switch gears. Are you a cat or a dog person? Is this going anywhere? I sigh. I'm trying to build some trust here, but you gotta make me you gotta meet me halfway. Zack looks away. Alright, I guess he doesn't want to talk. Dog. What? I prefer canines. Oh, cool. The sound scoops in again. So we'll go into Lumina. Yep. What brings you here? I'm meeting someone. Oh, a friend? Someone from work. What do you do? I'm a mercenary. This explains so much. <laughs> I'm gonna just say mercenary sounds pretty badass. You know what? How about we try one of the joke answers? How about we try that? This explains so much. It all makes sense now. What does? Everything about you. The angst, the hard ball in the exterior, the frequent cold shoulder. You're totally the brooding man ca main character from one of my RPGs. I love these nerdy answers, I love it. What are you talking about? He stares at me and I smirk. That's exactly how one of those MCs would react. So, why are you going to Illumia? Leon is taking me to the Mage Academy. He studies me again. Are you a mage? You don't have a manipulator. I shake my head. No, I'm looking for answers. Nelson doesn't understanding it doesn't pry. Although I try to stop it, a yawn escapes. You should get some sleep. We have an early start in the morning. That sounds familiar. Push myself to standing. Good night. He nods. I lie down in my bedroll and scooch around to get comfortable. I try closing my eyes to sleep, but something still doesn't feel right. Oh yeah, I need a pillow. Sitting up, I look around for anything I can use. My gaze falls on a pongo and I rest beside Liana. Pongo pillow. I don't think Pongo will appreciate it, but maybe he will. I don't know. If he's just resting beside Liana, I guess it's. Mm. Pongo pillow. We'll go with Pongo pillow. This is happening. Psst, pongo. Pongo blinks openly, bleary, <laughs> with open bleary eyes, but perks out when he notices me. Boy? Come here. Boy, boy. He happily bounces over. When he comes within reach, I make a grab for him, 
plunk him on my bedroll. He's he squeaks in protest as I lay my head on him. Like a slippery eel, he wriggles himself free and bounds back to the other side. No, Pongo! He glares suspiciously, <laughs> suspiciously at me. He turns his back to me and cuddles against the Anna. I sigh. Well, I guess I have no choice but to make deal with, <laughs> with being pillowless. Oh well, we tried. <laughs> Lying back down on my bedroll, I close my eyes and eventually drift to sleep. I thought he liked us, I guess he didn't. Alright, day two, we met a stranger. Now we continue over to Illumina. We get to see what Illumina is, or... I don't know. We just in general get the bearing of this place. 